This is algebra, the first new topic for primary six, where we are using English letters to represent unknowns. And we will work with algebraic expressions for this video. And this right here is an algebraic expression. How do we know there is no equal sign on the right hand side? The first thing I will do is to identify the unknowns. So in this case, there's one unknown, which is A. We've got 13A and negative 10A. So what we should do is to combine them. This is an expression, by the way, with four terms. One, positive 13a, second term, positive 2, and negative 10a. These are four terms. And if we are told to simplify, our answer should have fewer terms. Let's see how it's done. Well, let's combine the like terms. Now, what, do, what does that mean? We should combine the terms that are similar. And a will combine with a. And the real number 18 will combine with the real number 2. So 13a minus 10a. Another thing to notice is this. Look at 13a. What's on its left? The plus sign. It belongs, so-called, to 13a. Look at this minus sign here. Does it belong to 2 or 10a? It belongs to 10a. Positive 2 belongs to 2. Now, there's nothing written, written for 18, yeah? We assume that that is a positive 18. So, like terms will be combined, and 18 and 2 are the like terms that will be combined. You can't combine A with real numbers, though. Next step. 13A minus 10A gets us 3A. 18 plus 2 gets us 20. And we have gone from 4 terms to 2 terms. Hence, we have simplified the expression. So, here we are going to identify the unknowns, and here it's A again. And notice that I'm including the sign on the left side for my unknowns. Okay, again, this question has four terms. We're going to simplify it. Next step, we will combine like terms. So 5a and negative a, sorry, negative 4a will be combined, followed by the real numbers 6 and 2. So 5a minus 4a will get us 1a. So when it comes to algebra, we don't really have to write 1a. We'll just write a. And 6 plus 2 will get us 8. And that's it. Here we have a four-term expression, and we will first identify the unknowns, and then we'll combine the like terms. So 9p and negative 3p will combine. 14 and minus 6 will combine. So that gives us 9p minus 3p, 6p. 14 minus 6 gets us 8. Ooh, what's this question here? How many terms are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. So if we simplify, our answer should have fewer terms than this. What's the unknown here? That's A. Okay, and these will be combined together. So combine the like terms. 12A minus 5A. Then 15, the real number. 8 and negative 3 will combine together. So 12A minus 5A gets us 7As. 15 plus 8 gets us 23. And then 23 minus 3 gets us 20. So from 5 terms to 2. Here we have a 5 term expression and we are going to simplify. The unknown here is h and there are 3 terms with h here. So we'll combine them together and the real numbers. So 5 plus 9 right, gets us 14. 14 minus 4 gets us 10h. So that's 10h plus 14. Okay, having gone through five questions with you, hopefully you can do the rest of them without voice narration. Good luck!
And now we have Jane having five X dollars. Her mother gave her. So that's an addition of three X. Next, she bought a storybook for $10. So that's a subtraction. Uh, you don't have to do this, but a diagram can help with understanding. So she started out with five X. She was given three X and she had to spend 10 actual dollars. Notice that this is not an unknown. Question, how much money had she left? So the expression would be 5x plus 3x minus 10. So the like terms here are 5x and 3x. Combine them, you get 8x minus 10. By the way, this is called giving your answer in terms of x. That's a fancy way of basically saying your answer contains an unknown x. Sandy and Ben saved a total of y dollars. We don't know what each of them had at first. Sandy saved five dollars less. Aha, we know how that model looks like. Sandy saving five less would mean Ben saving five more. And the total is an unknown y dollars. Okay, how much did Sandy save? So we are interested in the smaller portion here. Well, that requires us to take the total y, subtract five, and then that answer would represent two units, but we want only one of those units. So what we do is we take y minus 5 and take that result and halve it, divide by 2. Here, your answer is y minus 5 over 2. Um, notice that I put parentheses around my answer and put a dollar sign because we are working with money. And this is my answer in terms of y. Dolly bought N, an unknown here, muffins, at 90 cents each. She gave the sales girl a $10 note. Ooh, there's trouble here. We are told cents and we are told dollars. So there's conversion required. How much change did she receive? So uh, one diagram that I would use would be to say one muffin cost 90 cents, two muffins times two, three muffins times three, four muffins times four. What's N muffins? We'll do the same thing, times N. So what's 90 times n? That's 90n. Bear in mind, this is cents. So how much change did she receive? I would convert $10 to cents, so multiply that by 100. So that's a 1,000 cents. And subtract the cost of the muffins. That would be my answer, parentheses around it, and put cents at the back. You can do it another way, though. Just use dollars. So now you have to convert cents to dollars. So because 90n cents, is the top cost of the muffins. Let's divide by 100. That will get us 9N over $10. So to get the change, that will be $10 minus this number of dollars. And this is my answer in dollars. Yellow ribbon is K centimeters long. Blue is twice as long as that. Okay, so if K is yellow, 2K would be blue. Why is the total length? Just combine them together. That's 3K. Don't forget your units, put parentheses and centimeters. Chelsea bought a cake and a muffin for $58. The cake costs K dollars more than the muffin. Well, we can use a model to illustrate this. The cake costs K dollars more than the muffin and the total is $58. Find the cost of a muffin. So that's the shorter bar here. So what we do is take 58 minus K dollars and we'll take the result of that, which represents two units, and halve it in order to get just one unit. Alicia has $200. She has Y dollars more than her sister. All right, so whatever Alicia has, which is $200, she has Y dollars more than her sister, which also means her sister has Y dollars less. Okay, so what do they have all together? We're just gonna combine the real numbers together. 200, 200, negative y. So the real numbers will combine to become 400. And that's the answer. And let's see how a level two question looks like. Darren had $220. After buying five identical caps, he has y dollars left. So my mental model looks like this, $20 at first. After spending on five caps, he had y dollars left. Find the cost of one cap. So what we have to do is to find the money spent on the five caps. So what we do is take 20 minus y, which would be our first step. And then that represents five caps. To find the cost per cap, we would divide this over five. Yeah, we'll divide this by five. So make sure you write the units and that's your answer. 
Mark is B kilograms heavy. Tom is 4 kg heavier than Mark. So what we can do is to write B for Mark. Whatever Mark is, Tom is 4 kg more. And Zino is 3 kg lighter than Mark. So whatever Mark is, minus 3. And that will be Zino's mass. Why is the mass of the three boys? So we're going to form an expression here. How many Bs do we see? Three of them. So B, B plus 4, B minus 3. So that's three Bs. Then 4 minus 3 gives us 1. Don't forget the units. If every four mangoes cost eight A dollars, or oh, that's nice, four and four, four and eight, nice numbers. What is the cost of 12 such mangoes? Okay, so the easy method is to say four mangoes, eight A dollars. One mango, we're going to divide by four, giving us two A. 12 mangoes, we're going to multiply by 12 on both sides. So that's two A times 12, giving us 24 A dollars. That is a faster method just because this question made life easy for us. If 4 mangoes cost 8A, 12 mangoes is simply multiplied by 3 to get us 24A straight away. George packed Y muffins into boxes of 6 with no remainder. He gave half of those boxes to his friends. How many boxes of muffins did he give to his friends? The number of boxes is simply take the muffins, pack them into boxes of 6. How many boxes are there? Y over 6. Now this may look confusing because we're dealing with algebra here, but let's simplify the problem, shall we? Suppose I say I have 30 muffins. I'm going to big, big, <laughs> pack them into boxes of 6. How many boxes is there? 30 muffins, put them into boxes of 6. That will be 30 divided by 6. And we have no remaining muffins. Okay, we will do exactly the same thing. Take the number of muffins, Y muffins, divide them into boxes of 6. And this is the number of boxes. Okay, we are told then that half of that is given to his friends. How many boxes did he give to his friends? Take half of the boxes, off as in multiply, and you get y over 12 boxes. And that's my answer in terms of y. Ali bought y stamps, he gave away 11 of them. So that's a subtraction right there. City gave him 20 stamps. So we're going to add. Then put all of them equally into 8 boxes. That's a division. How many in each box? Alright, so I will come up with a little diagram to, keep, keep, to just keep track of what's going on. Started with Y, gave away 11, and then received 20 from City. Well, let's find out what is the number of stems at first before dividing them into 8 boxes. Right, so Y minus 11 plus 20, that gives us Y plus 9, which means 8 boxes contain this. So if 8 boxes contain, contain that, then 1 box would be taking the entire expression, dividing that by 8. Mary spent M dollars on 3 pens, 6 notebooks. The 3 pens cost $5. Well, we don't have to deal with this unknown right here. We can just call this $5. Yeah. So if this is $5, what's 6N then? 6N is simply M minus 5 actual dollars. So what's the cost of 1N? So we're going to just divide the entire expression by 6. Don't forget your units. So the length of a rectangle is twice its breadth. So if the length is 6t, what's the breadth? Half of it, 3t. So a model would look like this. Breadth, sorry, breadth, length. What's the perimeter? In other words, two lengths plus two breadths. So the perimeter would be two lengths plus two breadths, giving us 18t centimeters. ABC share a packet of sweets equally. Well, that's important. There are n sweets in each packet. Cindy eats two and gives 10 to her brother. So that's subtraction, subtraction. Find the number of sweets Cindy has left. Well, let's draw a model to illustrate what's happening. Started with n sweets shared equally, which basically means for A, B, and C, they each had n over three, n over three, n over three. Now focusing on Cindy, she ate two, gives 10. So what did she have left? So quite simply, Cindy started with n over 3 minus 2 minus 10. That will be n over 3 minus 12. We have here a fence built 1 meter away from the sides of a square field. So in other words, this part here is 1 meter as well. Okay, each side is 3p meter. So this is 3p, this is 3p. Find the total length of the fence needed. So we want the perimeter of this outer line here. 
which means four equal sides. Yeah. Well, if we can find one side, that would be nice. Well, this is 3p plus 2, plus 2. So we know now one side of the square fence is 3p plus 2. The perimeter, sorry, the fencing, therefore, is equal to the perimeter, which would be 4 3p plus 2s. So what we can do is to say, okay, what's 4 of this? That's 4 times 3p, that's 12p. 4 times 2 is 8. So don't forget to write, oh, actually this should be meters, not centimeters. The length of a rectangle is 6 centimeters. So let's see 6 cm here, 6 cm here. The perimeter, so everything added together, is 5w. Well, what about the breadth then? Okay, let's take the perimeter minus 2, 6. All right, so that's 5w minus 12. That's the total for two breadths but we want just one of them. So we are going to take the entire expression and halve it. And don't forget your units. Dolly is at the x years old now. Her mother is 25 years older. So simply whatever Dolly is, x plus 25. What is that total in six years time? So in six years time, Dolly's age would be six more and mom's age would be six more as well. So what's the total in this future? Well, that's an addition of 12, isn't it? So whatever the total currently is, x, x plus 25, we're going to add 12 to it, and we will get 2x plus 37. The ratio of g's to a's in a pond is m units to 3 units. Does that mean 3 actual angelfish? Not really. It's 3 units of angelfish. Now we are told the, the number of actual angel fish, that's 48. Well, we can form an equation this with this. So 3 units is therefore equal to 48. 1 unit is therefore 16. Now, if 1 unit is 16, 2 units you would multiply by 2. 3 units you would multiply by 3. 4 units you would multiply by 4. M units you would multiply by M. So how many fishes all together? That would be all the guppies plus the 48 angelfish. There were 132 p marbles in a box. The marbles are divided between this in the ratio of this. Well, hang on. If we have two units here, that's a 4 plus 7, right? Two, two entities here. Well, that would equal the total number of marbles, wouldn't it? So we can say that that. 11 units therefore represent 132p marbles. Express what Sandy received. So we are interested in 1 unit followed by 7 units. So for 1 unit, we'll divide by 11, that's 12p. 7 units will be 84p marbles. Mr. Lee sold sugar in packs of W kg each at $4.50. How many kg could Jamie buy with $36? Well, if W kg costs $4.50, with 36, how many kgs could Jamie buy? So if I know how many 450s in 36, I can find how many kilograms. So this is a division problem, right? So I'm going to first take 36 divided by 4.5, that's 8. Oh, therefore, 4.5 times 8 gives you 36. We have to do the same multiplication of 8 on the left-hand side. So what that means is the number of kilograms would be 8 times W, which would be 8 WKG. Jonah had W dollars at first. He spent half of that on lunch. So we can use a model to show this, half W on lunch, which means he had half W left. And bought 8 pens at 150 each. Well, we can find the actual cost of those 8 pens being 150 each. That's $12. So we can write $12 here. Now, how much money did he have left? So this is a subtraction, isn't it? Spending $12. So what's left would be half W minus 12 in dollars. J, K and L went for a party. Each of them brought some sweets. Linda brought K sweets. Joan brought one third as many as Linda. And Joan brought five fewer, which means Kimberly brought more. So whatever Joan was, Kimberly had five more than that. What's the total that they brought? Well, we're going to add all three up. So that will be k, one third k, one third k plus five. So that's two thirds k here, which means that's one whole plus two thirds. That's one and two thirds k plus the real number five 
sweets. Mrs. Yong baked 12 H cookies at first. She ate, so that's a subtraction, 7 H. So we're going to show that 7 H got eaten. Well, what do you know? This is H, this is H. we can simplify that. So that's 5 H left behind. And she gave each of her four children an equal number of cookies. And she's left with three after that. So knowing that three was left after what was given to the four kids, what well, we can find out what this is. It happens to be 5H minus 3. So if four children received 5H minus 3, how many did each child get? So that would be taking this entire expression and dividing it by 4. Manesh cut a piece of rope G centimeters long into 25 equal pieces. In the end, he found that he had 6cm of rope left. Okay, so this would represent the 25 equal pieces. Yeah, so well, we can take G minus 6 first. That would be the first step. And that would represent the length of those 25 pieces. What's each piece then? Entire expression divided by 25 in centimeters. Mary made this number of rice dumplings she gave, so that's a subtraction, 4 to each of her sisters and had 4Y less. Well, mentally, let's take a look at, let's keep track of what's happening here. So she had 4Y left after giving to 4 per sister. The problem here is we don't know how many sisters she had, which is the question actually. But what we, what we do know is the number of dumplings given to the sister. That will be total minus what's left. So let's do that. To the sisters will be 2y plus 2 minus 4y. That will be 16y plus 2. Now we're going to find out the number of sisters. So if 4 times the number of sisters gives us this, the number of sisters will simply be the entire expression divided by 4. Jillian had three types of coins, 10 cents, 20 cents, 50 cent coins. The ratio of coins is 2 is to 5 is to n. Now bear in mind, this is the actual number of physical coins. Yeah, That's not the same as value. If the value of all her 10 cent coins was $12, oh, hang on, we can find the actual number of 10 cent coins. That will be the value, $12. How many 10 cents are there? That's 120 physical coins, which means two units represent 120 physical coins. One unit represents 60 coins. Find the number of 50 cent coins then. Oh, if one unit is 60, two units is going to times two. Three units, we're going to times three. N units, we're just going to times N. So that's 60 N 50 cent coins. Jason had 12 packets of sweets. Each packet contains X. He gave two packets to his sister. So that's two actual packets and ate four sweets. After that, he divided that among five friends. Okay, so situation started with 12 packets, two packets given to the sister. That means we know there were 10 packets left. Now, if we are told that each packet contains X, we can actually find a number of sweets here. But let's move on. Four actual sweets eaten by him, the rest shared among five friends. Okay, let's find the actual number of sweets here and subtract four, shall we? Then we would find the number of sweets given to the five friends. So if once one packet contains x, 10 packets will contain 10x. In other words, we know that there are 10x sweets here. Four eaten means 10x minus four, what is remain, remaining. So that's given to the five friends. So the sweets per friend would therefore be the entire expression divided by five. Sally and Molly shared the cost of a present. Sally paid N dollars more than half the cost of the present. Okay, so let's draw a model representing the cost of the present. And let's draw the purple line here at representing half. Now, Sally paid N dollars more than half. That's how we showed N, sorry, Sally's share. So halfway point plus N, that's Sally's share. Now, what's this then? That's Molly's share, and we are told that that's $50. Well, what we can say from this point is from the diagram, half is made out of $50 plus N. Molly's share, $50 plus N. That represents half. Question, how much did the present cost? Wouldn't that be the full two units? So if one unit cost N plus 50, what's two units? That would be 2N 
plus a hundred dollars. An exercise book was two dollars less than a file, which also means the file cost two dollars more. So actually that's the first piece of information that I would write down in my working. Whatever one U is, file will be one U plus two. Now what's the cost of three exercise books if it's known as K? So if one exercise book is one U, three exercise books would be three U. And we were just told that these three units cost K dollars. What's the cost of six exercise books? So six exercise books will be six units. So what's 3u to 6u? That's times 2. So we're going to times 2 on the right side as well, giving us 2k dollars. Next, three files. Okay, so one file is 3u plus 2. Sorry, 1u plus 2. Three files would therefore be three of these 1u plus 2s. That would get us 3u plus 6. That's the cost of three files. Now we were just told that 3u is k dollars, yeah? So does this, we, do we have to write 3u plus 6? Nope, we can just say k plus 6. Take away this 3u, and since we know 3u is k dollars, this will be k plus 6 dollars for three files. So now we don't, we are not expressing the cost in terms of units, we are expressing the cost in terms of k dollars, yeah? Now, don't forget, one dollar discount. So we need to take k plus 6, minus 1. So the cost would therefore be k plus $5. And this brings us to the merry end of this exercise. Ciao!